1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 1 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and, and of angels, and have not charity, and become a, as sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffereth long, is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunted not itself, is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, it is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, hope, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity or love never fails. We're talking from the subject matter of the characteristics of love, amen? And we see here that Paul lays out to the Corinthian church that even though they operated in the spiritual gifts, if they did not operate the gifts by love, it meant nothing. And though we as a church can have all types of faith, if we don't operate in love, our faith is useless. Amen. We could have faith for this and faith for that. But if there's no love, that's the that's the identifiable mark of our lives. The Bible says it's good for nothing. And I'm on this quest with God to make sure that the people of God understand that it's about our love walk. Amen. Jesus tells us that we ought to love our neighbors as ourselves. Part of the love walk is that you love your own self. Amen. And many believers are walking around uh, down and depressed because they don't even love themselves. Maybe something has happened in your past that caused you to think this way, to feel this way. But unless you have the love of God in your heart, you can't love anybody else. Amen. And then Jesus said that this is how men will know that you are my disciples. Not that you have faith. Not that you prosper, but that you love one another. Amen. Now, of course, God wants us to have faith because the Bible says without faith, it is, it is impossible to please him. Yes, God wants us to prosper because he says above all things, I want you to prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. But he says that if people are to identify you with me, you got to walk in love. Amen. And here in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 4, it says love is long suffering, it's patient. Amen. It's patient. It doesn't say that you're getting on my last nerve. Amen. But it's long suffering. Now, we must be long suffering because God is long suffering. And if you think about all the stuff that you've done against God, it doesn't compare to what others have done to you. So you can be long suffering. <laughs> you can be patient. Amen. Then the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter three that we have to put on patience. It's like a garment. And many people fail to put on their patience when they wake up in the morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because patience is a daily occurrence. We got to be patient every day. Amen. Amen. Then the Bible says we ought to be kind to one another, courteous, gentle, good, useful to one another, kind. Yeah. What happened to our kindness? Has the hustle and bustle of life trying to attain the things from the world caused us to lose our kindness? Calls us not to let somebody go before us. 
Amen. Then it says, it's not envious or jealous. Love is not jealous. It's not, watch this now. It rejoices when others get their stuff. And started, instead of you saying, why not me? Amen. Why can't I have that? Because it's just not your season. Amen. It's not jealous. Mm. Then it says it doesn't vaunt itself up. And it's not puffed up. It's not full of pride. Amen. It doesn't overestimate itself. Love doesn't. Amen. Love doesn't have pride in what they have. Because they know that what I have only came from God. And if I'm a good steward, I can have more. Amen. We found out last week that God hates pride. Those who are puffed up, who vaunts themselves. God, the Bible says that God hates that. As a matter of fact, it's one of the seven things that God said he hate. If God says he hated, then we shouldn't be doing it. Go to Proverbs chapter 6 so I can show you. Proverbs chapter 6. Look at verse number 16. Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 16. Look what he says. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that divides wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. That's what the Bible says he hates. A proud look, a lying tongue, those that shed, uh, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that divides a wicked imagination, feet that are quick to run to mischief, messy folk, on the phone a lot, gossiping. God said he hate that. A false witness that speaketh lies. Now, he said lying twice. So lying must be something that, 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 that God is serious about. As a matter of fact, the Bible says a liar shall not tarry in God's sight. That's how serious God is about those who lie. And those that sow discord among the brethren. You're putting, <laughs> you're putting people out on blast. And it ain't true. And God said, you're just sowing discord, trying to divide. See, the devil don't need to even have to work when you're sowing discord. You're doing all the devil's work by sowing discord. Amen, amen. But God said he hates pride. Amen. As a matter of fact, he said he resists the proud and give grace to the humble. Amen. Now, today I want to talk about the next thing. That's all review. Uh, today, I want to talk about the next thing that, that it said love is not. Amen. It says in verse number five that love does not behave itself unseemly. Amen. <laughs> unseemly means inappropriate. Unsuitable. For time or place. There are some inappropriate things happening <laughs> that need to be corrected. Amen. There is some inappropriate dressing that needs to be corrected. Amen. Amen. When believers I'm talking to believers now. I'm not talking to, I'm not talking to the sinners. I'm talking to believers. When 
believers dress inappropriately, it causes other believers to stumble. Now, particularly female believers. Now, it's no excuse for men to be lusting after women. Let me get it, get it straight now. There's no excuse. But inappropriate dress can cause some men to stray. Yeah. That's right. Okay, y'all, y'all just gonna y'all, y'all uh-huh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that love doesn't behave itself unseemly. Now I'm not talking about the the person that just got saved at the club and that's all I got, Pastor. I'm talking about people who've been saved for 15 years that dress inappropriately, unseemly. (laughs) Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Unseemly. Love doesn't behave itself unseemly. Not only am I going to talk about unseemly dress, but I'm going to talk about unseemly talk. Because some believers got dirty mouths. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Some believers have dirty mouths that need to be cleaned out. I'm sorry, First Timothy chapter 2. First Timothy chapter 2. Look at verse number 9. First Timothy chapter 2. Verse number nine. Look what it says. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with the braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which become women professing godliness with good works. The Amplifier says in verse nine, Also, I desire that women should adorn themselves modestly and appropriately and sensibly in seemly apparel, not with elaborate hair arrangement or gold or pearls or expensive clothing, but by doing good deeds, deeds in themselves good and for the good and advantage of those contacted by them as befits women who profess reverential fear for and devotion to God. Mm. Go ahead, Lord. Now, again, I, 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 I'm not just singling women out, but what I see a lot is exposure trying to get somebody to look at you. Now, you're going to get the look, but do you really want that look? Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, if you love me, you won't do that. Mm. See, I got to put it on a personal level so that you can see. Mm-hmm. That you wouldn't put me in a position to even have that type of thought. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, praise the Lord. First Peter, chapter 3. First Peter, chapter 3. Now, now, when it talks about the braiding of hair, that, that don't mean you can't get your hair braided, you know, and all that good stuff. He said, but look, just don't let that make you. Amen? Because you're beautiful without the braids. Amen. And if you don't know that you're already beautiful, <laughs> praise the Lord. The braids ain't going to help you. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, your wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. 
while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Whose adorning let it not be with the outward adorning of plaiting the hair, or wearing of gold, or putting on the apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Look what God say. He, he's not concerned about the outward appearance that you have on. He's concerned about a meek and quiet spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, how do I know I'm acting unseemly, Pastor? How do I know I'm acting unseemly? When you continue to commit willful sin, you acting unseemly. I mean, when you're doing something you know you're not supposed to be doing. And guess what? The world is watching you. That's unseemly. Amen. When you do things against the law, that is acting unseemly. <laughs> when you have to get from other spiritual authority to do what you want to do, that is acting unseemly. Well, I, I, I just I just wait till pastor leave. Pastor, come over to your house. And then. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you leave all the juice. You know, the real the juice that you really want to drink. In the cooler, in the car. And then when the pastor leave. You're acting unseemly when you allow your flesh to take control of your life. Go ahead. Now, the Bible says that there is no good thing that dwelleth in the flesh. Amen. The flesh can get out of control and act unseemly if you allow it to. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says that you ought to allow your spirit man to control your flesh man. Amen. Because you, you're not this flesh and blood. Amen. You are a spirit being that lives on the inside of this physical flesh. Amen. Amen. And you possess a soul. How do I know when I'm acting unseemly? When you start to recruit others to do it with you, Amen. you're acting unseemly. Amen. I mean, when you start uh, to do your dirt, Amen. and then all of a sudden you start to recruit other folk, come on with me. Mm-mm-mm. Well, how do I correct that, Pastor? Get born again. Amen. Get saved. Amen. Salvation will cure a whole bunch of things. Uh, thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Amen. Then always be God conscious. Amen. Always be God conscious. As if God was with you because he is with you. If I, if, see, see, many people will stop doing what they're doing if they thought God was with them. I mean, if you if 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 God was your was hooked to your belt loop, would you do some of the things that you do right now? If God was attached at the hip with you, would you do the things that you do? I mean, if it was right there, I submit to you that many believers wouldn't do the things that they do. One because they would. <laughs> With since the utter, the, the, the quick judgment that will come forward as a result of God being with them. Think about that for a second. Your kids, put it like this, most of your kids would not act up in your presence. Now, there's some kids that would, because they don't have no respect for their parents. That's why I say most kids. Amen. But the kids that have respect for their parents, when the parents are in their presence, they won't do certain things. Well, since God is our father, our parent, there are just some things that we can't do. And guess what? His presence is everywhere. So if you go down to Lake Charles, his presence is there. Amen. If you go to Las Vegas, his presence is there. If you go to the Bahamas, his presence is there. 
my God. Be God conscience. Mm. Next thing is get into a church that will hold me accountable. I mean, if, 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 if I already know that if Brother Kenny sees me doing what I'm doing, he going to check me. That's accountability. When did we lose the sense that we can't go talk to our brothers and sisters and, and get correction made? When did we get to a place in our lives where the stronger brother won't give the weaker brother a hand? When did we get to a point to where, no, I'm not going to tell you nothing because that might hurt your feelings? I mean, because whatever I do is out of love. Amen. So when I go and tell you that, hey, my brother, my sister, you shouldn't be doing that, I do it out of love. And when did we get to the place that we don't do that anymore? I tell you when. When the devil convinced us that by doing that, they're going to get upset with you and now you're going to lose your friend. Well, I tell you, you're going to lose your friend anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to get to have a, have, a, have a church that we're accountable. My God, we all accountable to each other. Amen. How do I correct, correct unseemly? Get into a Bible believing church that's going to teach me how to know when I'm doing wrong. Amen. Amen. Now, the next thing the Bible says, uh, it says in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 5, that love does not seek her own. In other words, love is not selfish. Love just doesn't want it for yourself, but he wants it for everybody else. Go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Our society has created a rat race. And... It has convinced us that only the winner receives the prize. Wherein God's system says that if you just complete your race, whatever your race is, you receive the prize. There's not just one winner in the kingdom of God. We are all winners in the kingdom of God. Amen. But the world have convinced us into believing that I can't help you because if I help you, then you win. And I lose. And that's not God's system. God's system says help each other out and everybody wins. Everybody wins. Everybody. Everybody. All the body of Christ wins. Philippians chapter number two. Philippians chapter two. Look at verse number four. Philippians chapter two. Verse number four. Hallelujah. Look what it says. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So in other words, I can't just be out for myself. I have to make sure that you have everything that you need. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. See, if I could get the body of Christ to understand that thing, yeah. that when one of us hurt, all of us hurt. All of us hurt. If, 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 if just one of us hurt, everybody, look, okay. If you go get a hammer, Put your finger out on a, on a piece of solid foundation. Hit your finger with a hammer. Just your finger ain't going to hurt. You're going to feel that all the way down to your toe. And so it is with the body of Christ. If one of our members are hurting, we all are hurting. Now, now watch this, watch this. 
if the toe doesn't know and see that the hammer is going to hit the finger, it's still going to be impacted by it. So even though I don't know your name and you hurt, guess what? I hurt too. We cannot be selfish. Okay, let's just, let's just bring it all right to the... You selfish with stuff that don't even belong to you. How you going to say that I own this and you don't own nothing? And so you selfish about somebody else's stuff. The life you have, even right now, it don't belong to you. This is my life. It ain't your life. Come on, Doc. I got to look on other folks' stuff. I got to make sure that you're successful. See, see, watch this, watch this. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. My success comes as a result of making you successful. Did you hear that? That the success I have comes as a result of making you successful. I'm talking about as a believer. I'm not talking about as a pastor. I'm talking about as a believer. As I make it happen for you, God's going to make it happen for me. See, when I understand that, I don't have to worry about whether or not you're going to be more successful than me. Because guess what? Look. If I help you in my natural state, I win because God's going to help me in the supernatural state. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Not with eye service as men pleases, but as the service of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Mm-hmm. So when I help you, God said, I'm going I'm, I'm I'm to help the person that helped you. We can't be selfish. We cannot be selfish. Selfishness is a trick of the enemy. To get you only to focus on you. And when you focus on you, you lose sight of kingdom. Amen. You lose sight on kingdom. Because kingdom is trying to get everybody saved. See, once you get saved, you say, but look, I'm I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. That, look, that would be such a miserable place to be if I only want to be there by myself. No, no, no. And some believers have that mindset. Go to hell. And you allow those folk to go to hell right there. They, they sit, they, 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 they your kinfolk. And because you're so doggone selfish, you'll let them go to hell when you can help them get saved. I got the word. See, baby, I carry my Bible under my, under my shoulder. I, I got the word. And all your family going to hell. Go to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. The key to living an unselfish life is learning how to serve one another. Amen. 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 The key to an unselfish life is learning how to serve one another. You in Galatians chapter 5? Look at verse 13. Look what it says. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty or freedom. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but use liberty by love to serve one another. See, that's how you solve unselfish, solve selfish problems. By serving each other. Amen. Take a note of Matthew chapter 20, verse 20 through 28. 
the mother of Zebedee's sons go to Jesus and ask Jesus, can both of my sons sit on one on your right hand and one on your left? And Jesus tells her, ma'am, you don't know what you're asking. See, you're looking for a position for them. But the position that you need to be looking for them to be great in the kingdom is that of service. So Jesus asked her, can they drink of the cup? The, can I drink of the cup? Can, can I serve you? Then Jesus demonstrates it. Jesus said, listen, let me tell you something. The greatest form of authority is one who will serve another. He said, now let me show you how much authority I have. Bring me some water and a towel and let me wash your feet. Peter tells him in a different verse, in a different chapter, in a different book. Jesus, I don't want you washing my feet. Jesus said, listen, let me tell you something. Peter, if I can't wash your feet, you can't have no part of me. Jesus, Peter said, hold up a second. Wash my feet, my hands, my head, just wash me all over. But the point is, are you willing to serve each other? Are you willing to serve each other? And see, 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 serving, a, a servant have got a bum rap. Servant have gotten a bum rap. In today's vocabulary, a servant is the lowest person around. In kingdom perspective, a servant is the greatest. So if I'm loving you correctly and I want to be the greatest in the kingdom, guess what? I got to serve you. Okay, watch this, watch this. And people want to get in ministry, watch this now, because they think I want to be served. And not understanding that being in ministry means you got to be doing the one that's serving. Oh, pastor, I want to get on TV. I want to preach the gospel. Well, hold up. Did you... you Get the, get the lesson. You can't be in authority unless you're willing to serve. Amen. Amen. I want somebody to serve me, sir. Come serve me, serve me. Oh, God. You know that sometimes I, I, you know, I, I have a challenge with that sometimes. Because I don't want anybody to think that I'm high and mighty. That, 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 that I, you know, so, so that's, why, that's why you see pastors slinging the mop. Because I want you to understand that your pastor is a servant. Amen. If you need something, your pastor will go serve your table. Amen. Oh, no, 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 no. Pastor, like, I was at a wedding yesterday, you know, I, I'm in line like everybody else. I'm in line, I'm in line, everybody else, you know. And, uh, you know, and long, line was long. <laughs> and so finally they came over to me and said, Pastor, uh, just go take your seat, we're going to serve you. I had, I, I, I had a challenge with that. I had a challenge with that. And in that, in that, watch this now, in that, what about all these other folk who was before me? In essence, I'm cutting the line. But I received the food, praise the Lord. <laughs> I was hungry. The greatest in the kingdom yeah. is a servant. Yeah. Now, 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 let me, let me see if I close out today's lesson. The next thing that it says uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, is that it is, love is not easily provoked. Oh, Jesus. Amen. See, it goes back to that patient thing. Whew. Love is not easily provoked. Now, you remember, you remember, remember, remember last week I told y'all that, you know, that, that pastor's working on some things, right? right. <clears throat> See, I, 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 I'm the type of pastor that's transparent to let you know that, look, I ain't perfect. 
I still got issues. Now, I've never had this issue. Never had this issue. Well, I've been easily provoked. I'm a very patient person. I, I'm a very forgiving person. But as of late, as of late, I've been having this challenge in this particular area. Being easily provoked. Now, now my easily provoked takes months before I get easily promote, provoked. You know, you know, some of y'all, y'all snap off right after you just blow up, boom! And then all of a sudden they be like, what is wrong with you? I mean, look at that right there. But, just, I'm, look, can I just open myself up? Before I came in this morning, became, before I came into the service, came into the service, uh, one of the musicians came to me and told me that we, had, we was having some challenges. Uh, you know, some plugs were missing, this, that, and the other. And I just went straight to the top. I mean, I went straight to the top. So I got on the phone. I got on the phone and called some folk, and, and I, I, I voiced my displeasure in a nice way, you know, about what had happened. And really, that's what y'all pray, were praying for me for, if y'all didn't know. I was very irritated. I was so irritated that I could not, I could not, watch this now. I could not even pray, I could not even give God praise early. Mm. While they were singing, I'm trying to pray this thing off me. Because mm. I knew that I had an issue. I knew that this wasn't going to work. And I knew that I couldn't get up here and preach this word and have that type of heart. Amen. Amen. No, 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 no. See, see, there are some people that go through the routine. Just, I mean, just go through the process. And, and look, look, I'll just preach to you any kind of way. I, and I, 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 I reverence God too much. And I love you too much to get up here and just put on the show for you. So I had, I had to ask God God forgive me. Because, no, 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 I was hot. I was hot. I was hot. I was hot. What did I say? I, I didn't even come in. Look, look, look. I didn't even come in service on time. I didn't even eat my breakfast that I had. And that thing... It bothered me because I knew that this was not God. And so many people just go through the motion and, hallelujah, <laughs> praise the Lord. And how can you go through the motion and knowing that God is watching you? And I couldn't put on that facade for you to make it look like everything was all right. Knowing that in my heart, my, see, because God is not looking at the outward appearance, y'all. God ain't looking at the outward appearance. God is looking at our heart and saying, look, what is your heart like? And then, then you know, God's going to ask, look, I'm up here. I'm up here in the holy place. This is me and God's meeting place. And God's going to tell me, now, you ain't going to get up there with that in your heart, are you? I'm like, huh? He said, oh, no, no, I'm going to break you right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Y'all got to understand something. No, God said, I'm going to break you right now. Your cool is out the window. No, see, see, because right now, see, y'all need to understand this lesson. That some of y'all so easily provoked, and y'all think y'all getting away with it, and God is watching you. I mean, it, it, was, it, it, was, it was just a, 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 I mean, it was just a boom, and it was like, choo. I said, I said, close the door, close the door. I said, I, I got to make a phone call, make a phone call, right? I am not pleased. I am not pleased. Uh-huh. Now, I will get it corrected. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo, praise the Lord, but I will do it in love. Yeah. See, those who are easily provoked, Blows up as soon as something happens that he or she doesn't like. Mm. We're easily provoked. Mm-hmm. 
when you ease provoke, <laughs> it's when you don't get your way. You know, you hear folks say all the time, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> what if God told us that? What if God told us that? It's my way or hell. Instantly. I mean, not in a week, not in a month, not after 120 years, but today. You make a choice, it's my way or hell. No, 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 no. Before you walk out the door, we need to know right now. Those who are easily provoked are ready to tell folk off and give them a piece of their mind. Mm -hmm. When you're easily provoked, oh, yeah, 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 I'm going to give you a piece of my mind right now. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind right now. People who are easily, easily provoked, those are people who are ready to act a fool. I, I mean, you, you see them all in public. Acting a plum food. You know I'm telling the truth. Some of y'all act like that. People who, who uh, are easy provoked, they become screamers and hollerers. They get loud. And you're not the only one at him. Your neighbors, people across the street. I'm not talking about people that live in, in apartments where the walls are so thin that they can hear you next. No, no, no. I'm talking about they got room between you and the next house. And then people who are, are easily provoked, they become hostile, physically violent toward other folks. There should never be a time as believers, listen to me now, as believers, that you put your hands on any person. You know, you know I'm, I'm talking about getting physically violent with them. You start slapping folk around, pushing them. <laughs> and those of you who have experienced that, that is not love. Well, well, no, they, they, they say, they say, well, no, that's how he showed me he loved me. He swapped me across my head. He loved me like that. No, he don't. No, 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 no. He's easily provoked. So he's trying to dominate and take it out on you because he can. Because you allowed it. Okay. You take a man who will put his hands on his wife and... The same man gets provoked by the police officer. Why there's a different response? Why? No, no, no. Why? Why? I mean, he got provoked in both cases. But his response to the provocation is that I'm going to behave in this one because he got that gun on his, on his side. He got that taser gun and he got that billy club. But the Bible says love, love is not easily provoked. That, and that's why I can't understand why believers fuss and scream and yell at each other when in the marriage state. I'm talking in the marriage state. I mean, they fussing and cussing and carrying on. Yeah. And just a few years ago, you was up here all down each other's throat. <laughs> Now, I'm talking, I'm talking about at the altar when y'all got married. <laughs> when y'all got married, when y'all said death do us part. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I almost had to come in and break y'all up because y'all, you know, you praise the Lord. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, you can't stand each other. Because we don't understand 
that love is not just a word we say. Love is who we are because we're in God. Now, remember, the Bible says God is love. And so if God is love and I am in God and God is in me, then I must be loved, too. So then my demonstration got to be who I am. For instance, for instance, I'm a giver. So it's, 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 just, a, it's just a natural thing for me to give. I, I, I don't have no problem with giving because that's who I am. Well, see, if I love like I'm supposed to love, then it should be just who I am. Even when folk provoke you. Your response should still be the same. I'm love. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean you let folk walk over you and treat you in the kind of way. Don't get me wrong now. But my response is a love action. The Bible says, if your enemy hungers, feed him. That's a love action. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. That's a love action. And that's what we should be. Now, I could go, I could go scripture after scripture about, you know, about being provoked and being angry and things like that. But you don't need that right now. You just need to know that, hey, love says I'm not easily provoked. And that's what passion is. I'm serious, man. I, I, I never get angry. I never get to the place where I was today. Never. I never. 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 But if you don't guard your heart, Amen. you can let some things seep in. Amen. And, and, and thank God I got a repentant heart. Amen. Yeah. I, I don't let things just fester and fester and just keep on going. No, 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 no. I mean, God, I heard God, I heard, I heard God speak to me right up there. I'm going to break that today. Now, right now, some of you, some of you, some of you need to be broken. Broken. Because you're not walking in love. 